please check out this video sponsor, which is Squarespace. Beanie fans and welcome to another episode of the engineering vocabulary delivered by a five-year-old engineer in today's episode all the way from York in England yes where the Battle of York took place between King Napoleon and somebody else we have these which are JRA just riding along wheels now, these were sent in by a viewer. So that age old question, is it a Hambini special? No, it certainly wasn't. So he sent them in. Normally I'd like to try these out for a bit longer than required, but he needed them back. So I would, um, I've had to do this review rather quickly. Um, but nevertheless, we'll go through this and see what you're getting for your money. This is a fairly typical thing that's happening around the world. Some company in a country, in this case, the UK, um, goes off to China and then buy some rims. This is, um, I think this is what's happened. Um, we've got the typical carbon rim, sapim, sapim spokes, um, nipples, metal nipples, so it's metal construction, and then you've got a Bitex hub, Bitex hub. Um, if, if, in case anyone's interested, the serial number of the wheels, so you can identify it, is here. Um, I will um, put that picture on the website. They are 56 millimeter rim brake wheels. Front wheel is 717 grams. So the external diameter at the widest point is 27 millimeters. Now it may or may not be clear on the video, but the widest point is not near the tire bead. It is sort of past the brake track. Internal diameter is 19 millimeters. We're going to talk about the hub now. This is a Bitex anti bite, apparently stainless hub. Um, it says anti bite on it, but I'll take some pictures as well. There's a load of marks on there on the smaller sprockets and they've bitten in. Um, this hub is, I guess, in my opinion, pretty poor design, or the wheel set generally is fairly poor design. On this side of the wheel, you don't have much um, offset in the spoke. Um, and that means in one direction it is stiffer, considerably stiffer than the other. Now, a lot of wheels these days tend to have a much wider flange on that side to take that into account, but this one doesn't. It's very, very narrow. And that results in, I mean, whether you can feel it or not is a different matter. Um, so there's that, and then there's also the overlap in the spokes. So the spokes, the effective length of the spoke only starts here. So on this side, so you've only got that much and hardly any angle to take any lateral loads. Now, to give an indication of what I mean by the flange on this side, if I show you, um, this is the just riding a long wheel, and then this one, is a fast sports wheel. You can quite clearly see how much bigger the flange is. Um, and you really need that on that side of the wheel because you haven't got much offset in the spokes. It's not like the front wheel where the um, hub is quite far away from the center, point, center plane of the wheel. To get this apart, you have to put two Allen keys in and then turn it. That's a dust seal, it's rubber. There's nothing much I can really say about that. And this just comes off like that. So what we've got here is a double row of poles. So there's, um, and I, th I think this is a bit of a con, but some people refer to that as a 12 tooth ratchet. Um, in effect, it's only six because they're in double rows. Uh, apparently the torque transfer through there is higher, but there you go. So there's a 6803 bearing there, 68, I think that's, yeah, that's a 6803 on the other side. Make sure if you ever do this, don't lose that spacer. In there is a 6903 bearing, so it's a fairly standard type of construction. And that's the other side, so you've got an axle, threaded axle, and in that side is also a 6803. This is the front hub to get this apart. Again, a couple of Allen keys or hex keys. And then we just turn that 
anti-clockwise. We've got Alan Key in. Just move my hand so you can see it. Fairly run of the mill. It's an extremely small bearing in that side. So just to talk about some of the aerodynamics so you can see practically. So at the back, we've got the fast sports wheel. You can clearly see the aerodynamic differences. So first of all, the wheel rim, despite it being 56 millimeters, is a different shape. It's a subtle difference, but it's different. You've also got the um, brake track that's been machined in that tends to give you, well, it does give you much better braking performance in the wet. Um, the nipples are very, very shallow on this wheel compared to this wheel where they are massive. Um, you've also got um, bladed spokes that are much, much wider than these ones. Right, it is that time of the show again. It is time for PowerPoint. And first of all, we need to check to see if the pen is working. Oh, the pen is working. I've been having good pen working sessions of late. Anyway, right. Just riding along, mahi, mahi, not quite diarrhea, but still crap. By Hambini, age five. You can check me out on all of these places on the intraweb, especially Instacrap and Patreon. So if you are on Patreon, remember to sign up. You get access to stuff uh, sooner and some other stuff that you don't get in normal places. Right, here we go. Let's go with this. Right, who are just riding along? Well, they are a UK-based company. They are based in York, um, which is in northern England. It's Roman city. Um, and they are what I would term as a Western integrator. And I will come to what that means in a minute. Um, but they are a bit similar to Hunt, Prime, and some others. This kind of business model exists in several countries worldwide. So... You've probably got the likes of um, the one that springs to mind, don't know for whatever reason, is Flow Cycling. So Flow in the US adopt the same kind of model, almost like fabulous manufacturing. But for, for, for um, JRA, it's a bit different. So specification, um, a 55 millimeter, 27 or 28 mil wide. Um, they are 900 dollar bucks or a thousand US dollars, depending on whereabouts you live. They are carbon rim and they've got OE branded hubs. Now let me show you their website. So this is their website. So you've got, and this is the actual set of wheels. So they're 870 quid, okay, 900 quid, whatever. Um, and this is the pictures of the wheels you can get. You can get them all sorts of different colors and things like that, if that floats your boat. It's almost like picking a disease. Anyway, <laughs> once, once you've done all that, you can, you know, spec the uh, wheel however you want. So you can pick, also pick the free hub um, with, again, whatever spec you want. Um, and then it'll give you a price at the end. Um, the rim is this type. So if we click on here, um, you can see, that, I mean, the overall thing is it, it's wider, sort of halfway down. So you've got the wide point um, further from the middle than the, the, the center line. Now, normally on an aerofoil, you typically have the widest point, sort of 33%, 20% of the entire cord length. This one is beyond that, so it's beyond 50%, because if you add the tire on the top, it goes beyond there. It's also very blunt, so you've got quite a nasty alpha critical angle in there. So, there we go. Please check out this video sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is a versatile service provider that allows individuals and businesses to obtain a variety of services, ranging from registration of domain names to running fully hosted e-commerce websites. Squarespace allows you to connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. You can manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights all in one easy to use platform. You can create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies and likes. 
You can use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your post too. Squarespace also now incorporates tools from third parties in the form of Squarespace extensions. These new third party tools can help you manage your inventory, promote products and streamline bookkeeping, tax compliance, and help you ship items across the globe. Squarespace also integrates with your existing social media profiles. You can display posts from your social profiles on your website, and you can also push website content to your social media channels so your followers can read, interact, and share it too. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash Hambini to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Right. What do the usual scumbags say? Well, they said the overwhelming initial impression is how responsive and laterally stiff the wheel set feels under acceleration. I'm sure you can feel something stiff under acceleration. Especially with Liz Hurley. Right, the integration model. So this is the, um, uh, the I guess the, the way that this business model is set up. So if you take just riding along, they are effectively here. Um, and they deal with the customer here. So Jimmy in London probably can't afford to shop with Sigma Sports. Um, he buys his set of wheels and then he's got his technical support and warranty from there. Now, what they are doing just riding along is they're buying a rim, probably off the shelf from somewhere, buying a hub off the shelf from somewhere from Bitex and buying some spokes from somewhere, Sapim. Each of those, let's take the rim brand, is buying components from, for example, Torre and Henkel, integrating them, and then you've got that. Now, the key difference here is where you've got the likes of some manufacturers that make their own wheels. So the wind spaces of the world, um, which, and the fast bolts and all that lot, they're much more embedded in here in the sense that they're not buying stuff off the shelf, they're having stuff made to their specification or making the stuff themselves. Now this works um, to a degree because these wheels are 900 smackers, but if you were to take this bit out and you dealt directly with all of this lot, you're probably looking at probably half that. So um, if you went and bought the hubs, the rims, and the spokes off AliExpress, um, you'd be, you know, 500 quid, that delivered to your door, something like that. That's what I think. Anyway, onto the hubs. The bear, I mean, the bearings in this, crikey. The front hubs, obviously I didn't have them for that long, so I couldn't comment for the on the size because I didn't take them out, but uh, as in the, the fit, but, the size, crikey, the front, 688 or 699, I mean, okay, 8, 9 millimeter bearing, and I mean, that size is ridiculously small. Um, and then you've got, you know, the, the problems associated with that. The rear hub is an anti-bite type, so it's to stop it digging in, but even with very, very limited use, see that, um, yeah, it's, it's just bitten in. Um, on all one, two, three, four, or all four uh, cogs on the lower end of the spectrum, and this is the. I don't know why this. I think this adds complexity to it, but they've got two rows of six pole ratchets. You might as well just have one row of six pole ratchets, but make them really wide. So um, yeah, don't know. Uh, right, then we come on to. Vibration plots. So in the orange, we have the just riding along, and I picked the 6903 filtered on it, and you can see what's known as the carpet, which is the, the sort of underlying vibration. So if you forget this peak, all of this lot, the carpet for the just riding along is quite high. There's a lot of noise in there. Um, it suggests they're stainless steel. Um, you know, they may 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 not be. I haven't been out to check them. So, but I think you know, that looking at that, I would say they were stainless steel. Stainless steel is actually a poor choice for a bearing because it's 
comparatively softer than just a, a steel chrome steel bearing steel bearing. Um, so the the net effect is you've also got the load rating, which is lower and more noise, and um, it has slightly higher friction as well. So TPI, who they brag about, you know, making these bearings aren't really that great in my opinion. Um, but there you go. I mean, as a comparison on here, I've put in the Fastbolt wheels. Now, the reason I've picked Fastbolt is because their rim is uh, 55, 56 millimeters. So it's a very, you know, adept comparison. And you can see the same bearing size, 6903, uh, on the drive side uh, filtered out. You can see the carpet frequency is, or well, carpet range is, is like down here whereas the orange line is, is much higher, so you've got a lot more there. Um, this business about the front hub is total garbage. I mean, the, the bearings are very, very small. So if they're 688 or 699, I've picked NSK as a brand, but I mean, you can pick NTN or SKF, whoever, um, you can get similar results. So 688 is what is fitted on the just riding along. A 6803 is typically what you would have on um, Windspace, Fastports, even Zip um, use a 6803 bearing. Now, the key parameters in here are the static load rating, which is 710 plays 1570, and the dynamic load rating, which is 710 plays 2630. So the the zip, the wind space, and the fast bolts, the bearing is has much, much higher load rating. Um, so, you know, that there's, it's what, seven, to, almost four times higher load rating for a dynamic load. Now, the other thing to note is uh, on a um, stainless steel bearing, you will have even lower number. So that 710 might be 500. On a stainless steel bearing. Now the pedantic amongst you will realize that I picked bearings which have a ZZ seal which is a, a metal seal uh, or it's not really a seal it's a shield and a VV which is um, a non-contact seal in NSK. It's not really going to make a difference in this in this context but there you go so that is the difference. The internals uh, this is if you're not familiar with this, this is a nipple and this white stuff here is, it looks like grease. Um, you can see that, uh, that. Now a lot of people said in some of my videos, oh it looks like um, resin pooling. Uh, there is a, a technique to check for resin pooling and that's to look at the, the fibres and see if the orientation changes, which is what happens there. Um, and it's quite obvious here. So that is where a layer has tented effectively, tend to call it, uh, and there and there. So towards the trailing edge of the rim, um, that's that's not great. Uh, and some more shots here. So there, there, there. Now, if you look at this bit, that looks like excess resin that's squeezed out from a layer of carbon because it's a perfect right angle square shape and there's a discontinuity in the fiber there so that stops there um, whereas this doesn't um, that and that look like it's displaced which is a void right the residual imbalance I've put here I guess the two most popular wheels that um, you know, people contact me about so we've got the wind space, um, which is here, and the fast bolts, which is here, and the just riding along is like 620 gram millimeters of imbalance at 20 degrees. So the imbalance is um, uh, almost in line with the valve hole, so it's within there or thereabouts. Uh, it's, it's not the worst, but it's not great. Right, aerodynamic summary. Now I didn't get enough data points to give an accurate result or what I would be happy to say is, a, is an accurate result. So I've projected a little bit of it, but 186 watts I think is a very reasonable number in terms of the accuracy. 
overall, you know, in terms of wheel aerodynamics, are they any good? Average, maybe. Wouldn't even go that far. Um, they could have a bit more of an improvement if they went to um, hidden nipples, but then you've got the maintenance problem with that. Um, and also, there's uh, the bearing drag is is not great. <laughs> Um, right, let's go. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier, you could probably go and build these yourself. So go buy the Bitex Hub. The rim, I think, is made from one of the Chinese manufacturers, um, and then the Sapim spokes. Right. So what's good? Well, there was even tension on the wheel rim, on the wheels. Um, you get UK technical support. Now, when I did read through some of the comments, it was almost like polar opposites in forums some people said they were really good other people said they were useless so i don't know but this just seems to be the two ends of the spectrum right so the, the coffee machine in the place next door which is one of the biggest um like engineering companies probably in europe um is is the mutts nuts so go in there swiss engineering company um immediately next door so uh, I've been there several times right the bad well I mean it was recommended by Road CC the usual shill bags right the front hub is woeful um, and the hubs are I would say generally crap the internals were crap average-ish aero and crap bearings so overall and key point right I think it's more cost effective to buy a set from AliExpress or Alibaba and then have them delivered. Um, you could buy a generic complete off the shelf rim set and you get fairly close to what you've got here. Um, or you could just buy the bits and then build it yourself. Uh, it's, it's horses for courses really. I mean some of the really cheap rims and I've seen some cheap rims from uh, cheap wheel sets from the likes of Trifox um, I mean they're loads cheaper than this about half the price and you get the same sort of overall carbon um, rim generic hub Novit Novitech hub and then the Sapin spokes um, so you know you can get them for half that so just riding along really sit in an unfortunate no man's land which is you know, they're more expensive than AliExpress. They've got no brand reputation, is in the sense they're not the, the Zip or the Rovals of the world or Bontrager. Um, so, you know, they're, they're there. So there is a place in the market for them. Would I buy their wheels? Not really. Um, the wheels overall, and I've said this, I think my adjectives are, are changing from what I think about them. About average, that's me being probably generous, I mean, the front hub's crap. <laughs> it's crap. If you're going to get that, it's, it's rubbish. Because the load rating on it is so low that you're just going to trash them so quick. Right. Questions and comments. Um, you'll be able to get additional info on hambini.com. And remember to like and subscribe. Please comment below. And that is it.